The Python Selenium Guide. Web Scraping with Selenium. Hey guys, today we're going to go through a tutorial on how to use Selenium for web scraping. Make sure to check out the blog post that goes along with this tutorial to find all of the code and detailed explanations. There are all sorts of reasons that we would want to automate processes on the web. Search engines use web crawlers to constantly go through and scrape all the sites they can. They can use the content they find to rank your results. Sometimes people need content scraped as well, such as product listings and content information. What is Selenium? Selenium was originally designed for automated testing of web applications. Over the years, Selenium became the go-to headless browser option for Python developers looking to scrape JavaScript-heavy websites. Selenium gave you the ability to scrape websites that needed to be rendered or interacted with to show all the data. Installing Selenium. To get started with Selenium in Python, first you need Python and pip installed on your system. Okay, so first I am going to create a virtual environment for Selenium and upgrade pip. And then I will install Selenium into this virtual environment. Next, we need to make sure that we have our web driver installed. Selenium supports numerous browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari. You can find the full list of supported browsers on the Selenium website. If you wish to use Selenium with Chrome, you would use the Chrome driver. Make sure you download the correct version that matches your installed Chrome browser. If you would prefer another browser like Firefox, you would go ahead and use the Gecko driver. Testing to make sure it works. So we can start by placing our driver in the same directory as our scraping script. And then we will create a Python script in this directory. Before we get started, it's important to note that the HTML structure of any website can change. This can include the location of elements or even the names of locators and selectors that are mentioned in the example that we're gonna go through. This tutorial is being recorded in November of 2023. Just keep that in mind. If anything isn't working for you, it might require a slight modification. If you find that anything isn't working, feel free to leave a comment on this video with any discrepancies, changes, or issues uh, provided in this tutorial. So let's create our first script to use to open a page in a browser. In this script, we will import our driver open the Chrome browser and navigate to the ScrapeOps website and then close the browser. Now we will go through some basic actions in Selenium. So Selenium can find elements in several different ways. Here are some different things we can look for to help us navigate through a page. Name locates elements using the name attribute. ID locates elements using the ID attribute, which is expected to be unique on the page. Tag name locates elements based on their HTML tag name. Likewise, class name locates elements based on the value of the class attribute. The CSS selector locates elements using CSS selectors, which offer a powerful way to select elements based on their attributes. And XPath locates elements using XPath expressions, which provide a way to navigate through the XML structure of a document. We'll use all of these methods throughout this tutorial. First of all, we'll use some import statements for setting up the necessary dependencies for the Selenium script to interact with a web browser perform various actions, and handle delays during the automation process. In this code, we import several things from Selenium, and we also import sleep and time to introduce delays in the script. We import action chains in order to create a chain of actions, such as scrolling and clicking. We import by so that we can find objects by a certain property, such as class name, or any of the others we listed previously. We also import scroll origin from wheel input so we can have the ability to scroll up and down the page. Next, we will add some code to automatically scroll to the bottom of our page. As you can see, we find the footer of the page by using its tag name. 
and we use action chain to create a new chain of actions. After finding our footer, we use our action chain to scroll down to it with the scroll to element method. So we can try this out if we just run this code. And we can see that we have automatically scrolled to the bottom. Okay, cool. So now let's set up a button click. So first, so we're going to add some code right below. And first we tell Selenium to find all of the links available on the page. After we have our list of links, let's iterate through them and find the get free account button. Once we find this button, let's click it. And in this example, we're just going to close the browser. Okay, now let's test some more functionality. Okay, so we're going to use the driver.back and the driver.forward and move back and forth between pages. And here I am going to just get rid of this target.click and increase the sleep a little bit so we can make sure we um, observe this back and forth. Now let's find our form on the new page and fill it out. So this time we'll find the input boxes with different methods, including XPath, name, ID, and CSS selector. Okay, so here we can see that we are finding the name box by using the XPath selector. We're finding the email box using the ID. We find the password box by name. Same with the confirm password box. And then we're finding the CAPTCHA element by its class name. So next we're going to fill out the form and we're going to use the following methods to do so. Send keys and click. So adding these into our code, we are going to fill out the name box, the email box, the password box, and the confirm password box, which are elements that we found in the code above. And then we'll click on the CAPTCHA box. So if we run this code, it'll fill out the form for us, but we do have a slight problem. The CAPTCHA requires us to actually identify objects in the pictures. Since this part requires human interaction, let's give 90, 90 seconds to accomplish it. Whoever runs the scraper will get 90 seconds to complete the CAPTCHA, and then the script will continue to run. We don't need to set a time zone since it's already selected by default but let's tell the script to choose a time zone using the dropdown. We can do this by creating a select object and then find the dropdown element and use either select by index or select by value to choose something. However, the site we are scraping doesn't actually use the select tag. We're dealing with a custom built selector. To get around this, we can simply use the click method that we used earlier. To find the XPath of an object on a web page, you can simply right click it and inspect it. Then in the copy options, you can copy the XPath of the item. Then similarly to before, we use the find element by XPath method and we paste in that XPath that we copied. And now if we run this code, we can see that it fills out the form and initiates the CAPTCHA box. Taking screenshots. Quite often you will want to save a copy of the page you are scraping for further analysis or to verify the information that you've scraped. We can accomplish this with the save screenshot method. To do this, we're just going to add a line of code before we submit the form and then another line after we submit the form. And now if we run this again, we can see that we have some new files and looking at these files, we see that we have the screenshots before and after we filled out the form. Dealing with dynamic elements. JavaScript often loads dynamic content, handles asynchronous operations, and renders complex web page layouts. Let's use Selenium to wait for a new page to load. First, we'll add WebDriverWait, 
and expected conditions to our imports. Then we tell Selenium to wait until the expected elements have been loaded. So here in this example, you can see that we are waiting for the element with class name equal to quote to load before we take a screenshot. And it loads really quickly. And here we can see that we have a file called loaded.png that is the screenshot of the page after it has loaded. Infinite scrolling. Some websites allow you to scroll infinitely. From a web scraping perspective, infinite scrolling can pose challenges for data extraction. Since the additional content loads dynamically as the user scrolls down, web scrapers that rely on simple HTTP requests may not capture the complete dataset. With a simple while loop, we can scroll an infinite site. First, we will get the site with driver.get, and then we will tell Selenium to scroll down 10 from the viewport by passing it in as an argument to the scroll origin dot from viewport method, which takes two arguments, an X or horizontal value and a Y or vertical value. In Python, while true automatically creates an infinite loop. So during our infinite loop, we will scroll down by 2000, wait two seconds and scroll again. Since we are inside an infinite loop, this process will repeat forever, or at least until we kill the process by shutting off Python or just closing the browser. Dealing with pop-ups. Pop-ups are all over the web, and in many cases, they are simply disabled by the browser. In this code, we head to the website and sleep for a few seconds while we wait for the pop-ups to appear. After the cookie notice appears, we find the X button using its X path and click on it in order to close the pop-up. The code then sleeps for a little while so that you can watch the pop-up close. So let's run this and watch, see what happens. Okay, cool. So we can see that it closed out of the uh, cookie notice automatically. Depending on what you're doing, you may want to disable JavaScript or launch in headless mode. This code will run with JavaScript disabled. Okay, so we will import the options in order to disable JavaScript. So here we are just going to set this JavaScript value to two. And if we run this code, this website tells us that JavaScript is not enabled. Okay. Next, let's run in headless mode. So this code runs without displaying a browser window. We're going to import options and then add the argument headless to our driver and run this code. And we don't see anything because it's running in the background. How to use a proxy with Selenium. The ScrapeOps proxy API allows us to easily set and use proxies. Let's make an example that uses the ScrapeOps proxy and a library called undetected Chrome driver. For this example, we will need to install two more libraries into our virtual environment, Selenium wire and undetected Chrome driver. We are ready to set up a web scraper in Selenium with proxy support using the Selenium wire library. We can use our free ScrapeOps proxy API credentials for this example. Here, the proxy URL is a formatted string that inserts our email and our API key into the proxy server URL. We then construct an undetected Chrome driver object. Think of this as an alternative driver to the Chrome driver that we used throughout most of this tutorial. UC.ChromeOptions is an alternative to the options object that we used earlier and we set headless to false so that we can see what's going on inside the browser. After we have everything set up, we construct our own driver object from all that information with uc.chrome, and then we add our Chrome options and our proxy options. Now, when we run this code, the browser will navigate to quotes.toscrape.com and then close the 
browser after a few seconds. So now you know the basics of using Selenium and how to use it in your own projects. If you would like to learn more about Selenium or other Python libraries, be sure to check out other guides on our website. All of the code for this tutorial can also be found on our website. For more information, make sure to check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. As always, thank you and make sure to like and subscribe.